do, 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 do. Man, I ate too many oranges last night. They were so good. Whew. You know, I know people get fat eating junk food. They get fat because I'm planted behind the computer too much. But I mean, at least I eat healthy stuff. Yeah, no one's ever seen me eating a candy bar. You know, I think everybody assumes, including me, I see somebody that's fat, like me, you know, because I'm fat. Hey, that guy's eating candy bars. No, that's not the case. Um, I want to do a short little video, and the stuff I just talked about, I'll edit out. You'll never see that part I just got done talking about. <laughs> There's a translation I've been translating poly now for over 20 years. By the way, one of my mottos is nothing true is popular, and nothing popular is true. I don't know if you saw it, uh, something that came out about all the Hollywood hypocrites. Of course, anybody with a half a brain knows they're horrific hypocrite, hypocrites, every single one of them. These are the same people who have been wagging their finger at you forever. These people that are so loved with like 14 million Instagram followers. You know, oh my god, the beautiful people that are Photoshop airbrushed on Instagram. My favorite singer, my favorite actor. Wagging their finger at you. Telling you to put on your face diaper. Well, people with long telephoto lenses <laughs> got pictures of them and none of them were wearing their face diaper, you know, as they're surrounded by thousands of people. That kind of hypocrisy is really good in that it exposes their hypocrisy to even the dumbest people, but it also shows you, you know, what lying hypocrites they are. Here's a quote. This is probably the only time I ever quote Bob Marley. Yeah. And it said, uh, I can't mimic his accent and I won't try. He said, what's uh, wrong with the world is that everybody that's true is hated and everybody that's fake is loved. Man, that's really powerful and accurate, the thing to be said. There's a poly word that's translated by, um, well, I don't want to use the, uh, that word, by people that are just not all that bright. They'll translate the word patugina. Sounds like you're spitting. An ancient dead language of polyprakrit. The word is patugina. And it's translated as commoner. It doesn't mean commoner, it means profane. Yeah? Because what is common is profane. You know the most common thing in the world, you know, at least on the surface anyway, like dirt? Yeah, it's profane. People generally don't like getting dirty, and there's all sorts of diseases in dirt and uh, garbage. You know, it's extremely common. We have garbage dumps. You know, that which is most common. So it's kind of an accurate translation when you translate the word patusian as commoner. It's common. Yeah, but nothing common other than the divine and natural order, which of course is incredibly common, but nothing that's common is noble. It's profane. It is noble in the sense that if we're talking about natura, natura, and mother nature is like grass is everywhere, flowers are everywhere. That's common. We're talking about things of man, men and women, I shouldn't just say men, for of humankind. You know, things that they say, things that they write, things that they produce. When we speak of the word common, we're talking in that sense, not of, you know, because sand dollars are incredibly common, but they're not profane. They're beautiful and they have of themselves the, the uh, proportionality of the divine. This is my discovery, by the way. I was trying to figure out the sand dollar geometry for like over 20 years. I didn't like focus my brain in on it, but it just popped into my head one day. It's like, oh, there it is right there. I should have seen it. All along, it was right in front of me. There's a story about a, a, a Neoplatonic Platonist, and he'd go around uh, teaching things that he knew. None of his uh, teachings are recorded, probably because they were not that good, but there are many other reasons for that. But it turned out that uh, he was uh, chided to uh, teach a group of uh, fools. There's a known group of fools that would gather together because, you know, birds of a feather flock together. And he actually gave uh, a lecture on uh, some of the deeper meanings of uh, metaphysics. And it turns out he was hoping that, uh, and he was assuming, that uh, we don't know exactly what he said. This is, a, this is an ancient uh, story with not any true specifics. That uh, he found out that they agreed with him and they started applauding him and talking about him. This, and when he found out that the foolish people, you know, thought so highly about what he said, he committed suicide. <laughs> it's not funny at all. He, he at least had enough wisdom to know that if he said things that foolish people agreed with, then he must be completely in the wrong. I mean, that's only a story, but it's rather apropos to the story, is that, you know, once again, the model that I've lived by, 
one of them anyway, that I created as nothing true is popular, nothing popular is true. I don't believe in a popularity contrast. Wisdom is its own reward. And the things that are most important in this life, that being wisdom and comprehension and understanding, are not cared about by anybody. I suffer the same issues as anybody else. You know, I, is death, taxes, old age, you know, pain and suffering, you know, because that's all I really have in common with most people. But, uh, you know, I have an insatiable desire to know and to understand, you know, the deeper principles of Natura Naturans. And really, you know, who, who on earth says that? I mean, I mean, it's true that if someone has a wife and four kids and two jobs, and I work seven days a week, you, know, you say, I'm just too busy for that. It's a partial excuse, but it's definitely true and undeniably true, but... When people use the word popular, I like can, um, in academia, this is uh, one of the most profane things. When I hear other people talk about it, I wince and uh, cringe. You know, like someone stuck a, you know, a needle up my backside when people say, it was peer-reviewed. What have you written? Peer-reviewed. Peer-reviewed is consensus. There, here's the immutable fact, and it's my statement. There's, there's no such thing as truth by consensus. Consensus is the profane. It is what is low and is base. Peer review, I don't know if you know what peer review is. But, you know, I got, these are dolls hand-knitted for me by this lovely lady. I've still got them. Now, this one's Tesla and Einstein. <laughs> it's these dolls. It's brilliant hand-knitting here, huh? Let's just pretend these are two academics and that Tesla and I said, I just wrote a paper on uh, quantum entanglement. Well... Since you've, uh, <laughs> you've studied what I've taught for uh, 10 years now, I'm going to peer review your paper and give it my approval because you agree with all the things that I've been teaching for 10 years. Well, thank you. And I'm going to find two of my other peers, including the, <laughs> the guy that I learned from, and we're all going to review your book, and it will be peer review approved. Big thumbs up there. Yeah, I'm trying to do the thumb. <laughs> I'm starting to resorting to dolls now, huh? That's what peer review, every time I hear that, I just cringe. I, I consume an enormous amount. There's some good, you know, little, little kernels of truth. I actually uh, get insights by the stupidity that is said by many academics, and there's just so much stupid in them. There's so much stupid. And peer reviewed. Peer reviewed by Dr. Bada Bing and Dr. Hoo Ha. <laughs> Dr. Hu Ha and Dr. Bada Bing agreed this paper. Uh, peer review. <laughs> peer review. I've heard that so many times because I've written countless articles over the decades. You know, I translate Paul. I've written extremely um, complex articles about various abstruse uh, topics of metaphysics on Anata. On uh, it was just many countless, and I've posted links to these articles and these books and. Invariably, like one person in a thousand, hey, have you had it peer reviewed? <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> it's an ancient dead language only a handful of people translate. And 99.99% of them, in other words, basically everybody on earth but me, is a sectarian translator. You know? What is a sectarian translator? In other words, it has to agree with my religious beliefs and. All my elders, otherwise the translation is incorrect. So I have to make it look. And that's not an exaggeration, that's the truth. And that, of course, is where we get the term religion. I mean, a secularized metaphysics is what religion is. In other words, it has to only be examined through the religious lens of the garbage belief system that I believe in. If it doesn't, then I must tweak the translation. <laughs> they actually sometimes say this, tweak the translation! so that it did pass through the lens of my religious belief system. That's not an accurate translation. You know what that is? When they mistranslate stuff on purpose to agree with a religious belief system? Yeah. It is a religious peer review. They don't have to have other peers standing behind them to agree with them. The only thing you have to do is it has to pass through the lens of their silly little belief system. So instead of, excuse me, allergies, instead of uh, fellow academics, you know, agreeing with the nonsense that you've written, I, you know, I'm the student of so-and-so, I'm going to write 
I'm basically going to rewrite the same garbage that's been filling my brain for years by a academic, academic uh, doctor professor hoo ha. <laughs> he is going to peer review it, and, and when people read the paper by this guy, he's like, "I never heard of this guy." This is true too. This is funny, but it's true. I, <laughs> I just read the paper by Dr. Bada Bing, but I've never heard of him. Oh, yes, he just got his doctor's degree, you know, like four years ago. I don't know whether to believe it or not. Oh, wait, I do believe it because Dr. Academic Professor uh, Hoo Ha has peer reviewed Dr. Bada Bing's paper. <laughs> I've seen this many, many times. I've even had people say this in uh, debates that I was like, I don't, I don't know whether I believe this or not. I was like, well, sure you could believe it, because uh, his elder, Dr. Professor Hoo-Ha, has peer-reviewed it, and he has given it his stamp of approval. Oh, okay, because they're both... <laughs> and this is what peer review is. And this is the reason why there ain't any good poly-to-English translations. There are actually some. The only two that are good are not Maurice Walsh. Ugh. He's just completely incompetent, but also, too, he actually translated it to a Theravada belief system. Of the Nikaeus, for example, uh, Caroline Augustus Foley Reese Davids and F.L. Woodward. These are true people who examine the texts for what they are in themselves. They did not use a uh, religious belief system of garbage to purposefully mistranslate it. So here we go. Hmm. This all circles right back to the Patugina. What is common is profane. What is profane is common and base. There's no such thing as truth by consensus. Consensus is peer review. Yeah? And these purposeful mistranslations by religionists. Hey, I've done a translation. I'm quite widely known. Not meaning me talking. I don't want to say this person's name. He translates, if, if there's a very pro-soul pro passages, he purposely hides them. And I've seen him do this hundreds of times. No one else can see it. You know why? Because there's about that many people on this earth that translate ancient Pali. It's been a dead language now for a, eons, literally eons. <sighs> Thankfully, <gasps> this being a prodigy of language translation, as actually technically said you know, by my Russian trans uh, later professor, uh, in college, University of Kentucky. And I can see through their nonsense. Other people can't. And just by, well, this is a good translation. Look, it's right here on the back cover. It's been peer reviewed. <laughs> oh, I wish people would wise up sometimes, but they don't want to. <sighs> Sorry, I had allergies. <clears throat> I was in the dusty basement rearranging stuff. Yeah. Basement's dusty. It's full of dryer lint. I'm going to edit that out of this video. You'll never hear that. <laughs>